Evans, the Director of Health Evidence, and we're very happy to have you on the line today for our webinar on community-wide interventions for increasing physical activity, what's the evidence? And we're very pleased in, in I'll say, the studio to uh, uh, present the findings uh, of his review. So welcome to everyone. And I'm just having a little technical difficulty here in moving my slides. This is the review that we're talking about uh, today, published in 2011 uh, in the Cochrane database. Just a few little housekeeping uh, issues. Uh, uh, we would like to, if you have questions, findings, we would like you to post those comments and questions to the Q&A during the webinar. There are a number of us here that will all be uh, looking at those questions uh, to, in order for issues. We recommend using a wired internet connection versus wireless. Sometimes the wireless can act up a little bit. And if you have continued ongoing issues, please call the WebEx 24-7 helpline. The number uh, is listed here. You can see that we're currently asking you uh, a question in terms of adults as uh, you continue to answer those. As well, uh, if you are, we will do our best if you are having some sound issues uh, to answer those. You might hear from Robin and or uh, Jenny Yost uh, with a few directions uh, about that. Okay, so we're all here to talk about uh, community interventions, community-wide. This is the health evidence team. Uh, all of us here at Health Evidence, and really we've learned uh, over the months that putting uh, on a webinar, a successful one anyway, is a whole team approach in terms of the creation of the, the PowerPoint for today, the writing of the summary statement on the review that will be posted, uh, as well as all of the logistics uh, in terms of um, carrying one of these webinars off. CA is an online repository of evidence evaluating the effectiveness of public health interventions that exists uh, as systematic reviews. And uh, the hope being that by making it easier to access this information, we'll also make it easier to integrate that evidence into public health decision making. By having a repository, we're hoping we're saving time in terms of uh, you're not having to level that is like looking for a needle in a haystack. It's relevant and current, so we're only ever a few months behind what has been published. We have a very transparent process in terms of how we go about identifying possible reviews, assessing their relevance, uh, and uh, assessing the methodological quality of those reviews. And then having the webinar today is being brought to you by a knowledge translation supplement grant that was funded by the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, the IHR, and that's the funding number there. So I'd like to take this opportunity now to introduce to you Dr. Philip Baker, who's joining us from Queensland, Australia. He's a professor of epidemiology in the School of Public Health and Social Work. Uh, and at the Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane. So just uh, give me a moment while we transfer the mics. Good afternoon. Good day, as we say it in Australia. Thank you very much for this opportunity to present the findings of our systematic review on community-wide interventions and address the question, what's the evidence? As Maureen has pointed out, our review has been published in the Cochrane Library in April 2011, and we believe it remains the most recent and comprehensive review on this topic. So just before I go into the content of the review, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors who are listed here, and the five institutions and the four countries that we are from, and each of us has specialty areas which we've contributed to this to this review. The review is supported by the Cochrane Public Health Group of Editors, and as a review team, with our goal to produce an objective and robust summary of the evidence from a global perspective. We wanted a summary of evidence that practitioners, policymakers, and consumers could use. And we really hope that you find this review um, useful. You'll also find the review on the Cochrane Library, and we've prepared some podcasts, both in English and in Mandarin, Chinese, and it will become apparent as I go through why we chose to do the review in Chinese, the, uh, the podcast in Chinese. And we've also prepared, in the Cochrane Journal Club format, a journal club um, 
materials that you can share with your colleagues and uh, perhaps run your own journal club and have an opportunity to discuss uh, the review. And these are all found on the Cochrane Collaborations website. So at this point, if we have any questions, if you could just please um, forward those through. Okay, I think we're good to continue. Okay, here we have the pickle question for the review. And you can see that um, that health evidence has um, scored our review as um, nine being strong. And with every systematic review, you need to have a very um, focused answerable question. So we have uh, used the pickle format here. And um, P um, is the populations. These are communities with geographic boundaries. So we can often think about communities in different ways. Sometimes people think of them as ethnic groups, but we're defining it as a specific um, geographic boundary, as some population with a specific boundary. And um, whether it is a, a town or a city or in even one case of our included studies was a school catchment area, so some geographic boundary. We then um, used I as the interventions, and we looked at those interventions which intended to reach the community with multi-strategic approach. So we were looking at studies which had at least two strategies aimed at either promoting or facilitating physical activity. And our comparison is against usual practice, which was in many cases no um, community-wide campaign. And the outcome is we wanted to find out whether these programs changed the whole community's levels of physical activity. So our primary outcome is physical activity, such as a variety of measures uh, that were included in the studies, and these included things like changing the percentage of the population which was active, as well as the frequency of activity. So what we wanted to know was whether community-wide interventions or campaigns, as some people would call it, could measurably increase population's levels of PA. We felt it was important to, to take this approach because this is the way that policymakers tend to think. And epidemiologists tend to report asking the question, well, what percentage of our population is physically active? We articulated the following public health questions. One is, do community-wide multi-strategic interventions increase community levels of physical activity? And if they do, are the effects different within and between the populations? We were wondering whether these community-wide interventions perhaps have an equity gradient. Maybe they um, can reach the disadvantaged but not the advantaged, or they might even increase the equity gradient between those populations, or the subgroups of the population. We were interested in what happens when you put in these interventions together as a package. And here we've listed some of the combinations uh, which we said a community-wide intervention needed to be multi-strategic. Multi so it was not just the mass media campaigns. That would be included in a mass media review. And I'm aware that there is a um, review um, by Brown that came out late last year on standalone mass media. And um, so those singular approaches would be excluded as well as those which just focused in on environmental change, such as changing railway tracks to trails. So what we wanted to find out is when you put these a number of things together as a package, 
do you increase physical activity or what happens to physical activity? And so we um, worked through, and you can see the references in the um, introduction, introduction and background of the paper of, of how we broke these um, into these six components. Uh, so we asked one component could be social marketing, we grouped social marketing, another could be other communication strategies, another could be individual counseling, um, such as that by health practitioners. The fourth, partnerships, uh, whether partnerships were built either with government or non-government. Uh, the fifth was whether um, there was evidence of working in specific settings such as schools or shopping centers and environmental change strategies. In all, we included 25 studies. No two studies were the same, although most included a component of building partnerships with the local governments or NGOs, 22 of those studies. Other studies included individual counseling by health providers. There were 18 of those studies. 17 of the studies had mass media campaigns, and there were um, 19 that engaged with other communication strategies. We found that some worked in specific settings. So 21 of these studies um, involved specific settings, and there were 10 that had a focus on in doing some sort of an environmental change strategy. There were three, only three studies that included all six strategies, and I'll go into this a bit more detail later in the presentation. One of the feature of this review is that we use in the review, and you can find this on page four of the review. So this was used, um, this logic model was used in several stages of the um, review process. So we were really trying to be explicit uh, in what we were doing that other people who read the review can see how we were trying to, um, the, the broad scope of the review as well as the process by which we guided our interpretations. Okay, this next slide has um, the overall considerations. So we undertook an extensive search of 24 electronic databases, including the searching of Chinese databases using Chinese characters, as we were made aware um, through the process that there were um, interventions that being undertaken in, in China and that um, people in China kind of like these community-wide interventions. So we went searching for them and found them, found four of these um, studies published. Searches were carried out for the period from 1995 to November 2009 with over 17,000 records um, identified qualitative synthesis within the review. That's a lot of work. I can tell you it was a lot of work and we were very exhausted at, at at, um, by the time we reached um, sorting through all the studies. But despite all this work, our conclusion is that there is insufficient evidence. And the reason for this is that most of the included studies are at high risk of bias. We included, we identified serious issues in the design, particularly in the execution, which affect the trustworthiness. Only one of the studies was randomized. And we were quite frustrated by the fact we read studies and we thought, well, you know, these communities, they could have just flipped the coin between them. Um, so we were, and also by reading some of the studies, we could sense from the authors that they had selected a community which they felt that um, was likely to benefit versus a community that perhaps wasn't going to benefit. And, and that was certainly a challenge and um, we didn't really think was a fair comparison. Only one of the studies, so only one of the studies was randomized. And as I said, we, we, we felt that in many cases, some of the, it was obvious that the comparators weren't fair. And um, there were certainly problems with the measures that were used in the outcome. I'll go into this a bit detail later and give some suggestions on how this can be improved for, for future research. Amongst the study, there are, I'm sorry, amongst the studies that we found, there may be some efficacious approaches which can be used to increase physical activity. If not for the whole population, Perhaps it might work in some subgroups. And, and what we found is that some 
interventions were able to perhaps work. Um, we're able to engage some subgroups and segments of the population. But to be fair to some of these authors, they, they, um, some of them selected communities which were very difficult and problematic in the, um, having um, a variety of social and economic problems as well as um, very high levels of physical activity. And some of the communities were quite remote and six of the studies were done in low-income countries. When looking through the results, some studies showed positive effects. Some interventions resulted in lower levels of physical activity than the control, and others no effects. And in many cases, the programs were working against the background of decreasing population levels of physical activity and increasing sedentary behavior. So in some studies, we noted that um, both groups decreased in physical activity, but the intervention group had, I'm sorry, had less, lesser decrease. And that's why um, we have um, tried to report um, adjusted data to, to try to bring out um, that magnitude rather than just saying, well, too bad, uh, the study um, physical inactivity uh, physical activity decreased and um, and it didn't increase it, um, therefore it's not effective. But what we just said was, um, what is, was there any difference between the two? So let's have a look at some of the general in implications. So the first take home message I think from this um, is don't assume that by combining interventions, doing a lot of activity, being multi-component and multi-strategic is going to yield a measurable outcome. Although complex um, and it's very difficult to do these things, we can still end up with things that are ineffective. And all, and all this activity might actually, there may be a risk of even distorting the message itself. With the high risk of bias, we have mixed and inconsistent results. We don't think that the collective group of interventions should be labeled evidence-based or evidence-informed. The individual components such as primary school-based components might be worthy of a sub-labeling. So if there's a, so if this approach is to proceed and people want to proceed with it um, and work with these concepts, then more robust studies needs to be done to investigate whether community-wide interventions provide an effect. Measuring the outcomes is very important. And we are concerned that some of the, the poor measures that, are, that have been employed may have actually masked, masked an effect. So physical activity needs to be measured accurately, accurately. And continuous measurement in what we looked at, in our opinion, is probably the best way where you have promising studies. And we think that when you um, design the, inter if one is designing the interventions, we need to consider the individual components. What are you actually putting in? and build from the ones where there is evidence of effectiveness, um, such as those delivered in the educational section, sector. So public health should consider that the interpretation is limited by the number of studies, by these included studies. And many of these studies are at high risk of bias, and that's because they were purposely selected. And we noted some of them had a head start, so they even, before even the intervention officially began, they were already beginning. They had already um, been undertaking the, the program. And in terms of, um, we found there was detection bias, again, with the poor outcome measurements, low response rates. Uh, so some 
response rates in the 40%, which um, would tell us that we don't know about the 60, what happened to the people, the other 60% of the population. There's certainly, we uncovered reporting bias operating. And what we mean by that is that there were outcomes that were being measured, but they weren't actually um, being reported in the publications which we encountered. In one, in one study, uh, we have, have included it, even though it, they have not published the, um, the outcome measures at the end of the study, because we were made aware that they measured it through the study, but not at the end. So what's the evidence? Now we'll go into it in some detail. Of what we found, and so as we go through this, just please remember that we found no high quality studies. Nine of the studies were at unclear risk of bias, and in these we didn't have the confidence. In 16 of these studies, we considered to be of low quality, and therefore by saying they lacked trustworthiness. And what we tried to do was, because in many cases the, um, the intervention and comparison groups were um, quite different in their baseline levels of physical activity, we had to come, we had to do some adjustment. So what you'll find in the paper is um, adjusted differences for these groups rather than um, just the, the absolute difference. And in, in some cases it, it helps us um, understand a little bit more clearly the effect, which could be masked by um, unbalanced um, comparator groups. So what we've done is we've divided the outcomes into dichotomous, such as percentage of the population physically active, the percentage of the population not sedentary, so lower rates would be favorable, the percentage of people engaging in sufficient leisure time activity, and then the other group of measures, there are three of them we classed as continuous outcomes, and this included the, the amount of time, the mean time physically active, the mean time walking, and the mean energy expenditure measured as METs. So what has the review found? So there's much variation in the interventions, the population and the outcomes, and the results of the studies are very um, the, the results of the studies themselves are inconsistent, and with this inconsistent, it makes it difficult to identify the key, um, to come up with some key reliable findings. And often in um, studies that are high risk of bias, there's a tendency for them to uh, have quite significant positive findings, but we were a bit surprised and taken back in some cases that actually few of the studies reported a substantial or sustained increase in physical activity. And there was no evidence that when we did some assessment of um, intensity of the intervention, that's the dosage, that these worked better than the others. So as I mentioned, we, we took a global perspective. I know there's been other reviews that have been undertaken which have, um, for example, only looked at um, primary studies within a particular context, like the US context, but we wanted to know what was being done internationally. And so we found these studies are actually quite popular. And they're being done and we found these um, study before and after control study designs were, were done in 12 countries. Six of these are in low income countries. So that means there is a global interest in, re, in, in these programs as well as in doing research and asking the question, do they work? And uh, we do find it interesting that four of these studies 
were undertaken in China. So this study, this slide here now lists the included strategies. Um, so we had 25 studies. And you can see that of the building partnerships, there were 22 of these. Some form of counseling were 18. Mass media were 15. Other communication strategies were 18. Working in specific settings, 11. And 10 of these had environmental change strategies. Now, in terms of how many studies had how many components to them, so three of them had all six elements. Three studies had five. 10 had four components, seven studies had a combination of three components, and there were only two studies that had at the minimum, met the minimum of having two. And then we're, we also asked the question, well, what are these studies trying to target? Are they all trying to target physical activity or, or sedentary behavior? And the answer was no. Eight of these studies specifically um, targeted, um, well, eight of them were really, were had the focus as physical activity, whilst the remainder of them um, were a collective of um, CBD risk factors, or just healthy living broadly, of which one of the strategies um, was um, physical activity, or, or our main message of the program was physical activity and as a measure. Okay, so let's begin with these dichotomous outcomes of physical activity. And what we have marked here is the, um, the relative risk. So if we have a relative risk of one, then that means there is no difference. If the relative risk is greater than one, it means it favors the intervention. Now we have these dots, and along with them, some you can see there are arms. And these are 95% confidence intervals. So we're 95% sure that the, the um, value lies between these um, two um, points. So let's have a look at Brown 2006. And what we can see is that Brown 2006, um, it crosses favoring control as well as favoring intervention and showing that it just um, a very slight increase um, favoring the intervention, but not statistically significant. So when we look at it, at these dichotomous act outcomes of physical activity, only this one study over here, this very intense study in, in China on the far right, Jiang 2008, was st statistically st significantly increased um, physical activity. So the remainder, there was really no difference. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. And you can see that in this one, we look at um, physical activity during leisure time. We think there is some promise here in the Looper study. And we have Looper study. Study. Um, we've they have um, taken two approaches um, to measurement, and so we've um, put these um, um, displayed them separately, and, and they're explained in more detail in the um, review. And they um, is a, a favoring towards um, showing some increase in physical activity during leisure time, but not statistically significant. However, on the um, far left, the Nishter study done in um, Pakistan, um, it, it certainly it favored the control, but it's not statistically significant. Okay, so again here really um, we can see that there is no um, clear um, increase in physical, consistent increase in physical activity. There's certainly nothing that's statistically significant. Now the next slide here is on the dichotomous outcomes of sedentary or physical inactivity. And um, so we've marked if it's less than one, then it favors 
on the intervention. So we want less of this. Um, and again, um, one study is is just slightly below the line, but not statistically significant, and that's the Genom 2006. Um, where it's, um, and the NIFS not since they're 2001. And also remaining um, above but not statistically significant, very small um, numbers in that study, and then the good men are making absolutely no difference. And that's um, pretty tight around the, um, the, the adjusted relative risk of one. So let's now move over to the continuous measures. We think this is, these are more are useful. So seven studies of this, we found um, seven included studies used con continuous outcomes. Um, three of these showing some evidence of increasing. Now the D. Cocker, 2007, their increase was only for women. And um, the Simon 2008 was, um, in that study, they only measured outcomes for um, children who were 12 years of 12 years old. So 12 years old represented the community. And then we had the Wendell Voss 2009. And again, these studies measured against the background of decreasing physical levels of PA. OK, so the time spent in um, continuous, I'm sorry, in leisure time spent in physical activity. Um, um, you can see that, again, the um, Tukakar um, and, the, and the Simon study were statistically significant and the Wendell Voss for, um, for women only. And um, a non-statistically significant decrease in men in the Wendell Voss. So that's where we're, we're concerned about, um, we've, we've noticed how Perhaps these interventions can maybe reach um, one sector of the society, but not other parts of the society. Okay. Now, in terms of walking, uh, only the De Cocker, um study had a statistically significant increase in the amount of walking. We did find um, increases in the Wendell Voss um, for both men and women, but not statistically significant. And certainly in the um, France in 2004, no difference. Can okay, you we'll move over to looking at um, MET? Uh, that's the energy expenditure. And we have increased um, energy ex expenditure in this, um, I believe it was in a it was a Iranian study. But in the cloak study, um, basically no, no different, no change. Okay. One of the things we wanted to know, and, and, it, and it often came up, was, well, maybe the issue is that um, some of the interventions aren't intense enough, or they're, or they're not enough dose of a community-wide program. So we, we developed an algorithm to try to um, describe and describe these interventions and we and we classified them as low, medium, and high intensity. So there were nine of these were high intensity, ten medium intensity, and six were low intensity. And the Chinese studies tended to be very intense. These are studies which um, everybody in the community was reached. There was intense door-to-door -door, um, knocking and measuring and, and lecturing, as it's been described by a colleague of mine um, who is in one of the provinces, in, from one of the provinces in China where they have done the intervention. They're very intense um, programs and they reach um, every part of the community, everybody in the community, not about 95% um, participation rates. Now, of these high intensity um, studies, 
Five of these reported some improved physical activity outcomes. And there were three of these where there was no effects. We also, I think it's really keen to, to point, we're very, I think it's really important to point out that some of these high intensity interventions um, probably not suitable or not appealing to the Western um, settings. I'm not sure I what Canadians these days are like. Um, I was originally born in Canada, but I lived in Australia, but certainly in my neighborhood in Australia, the type of activities which were in these high intensity interventions, um, I, I think that people would not even answer the door to. Um, so that's just my own opinion, but I think um, and talking to other colleagues, um, that some of these inter interventions may not be appropriate uh, or translatable um, to the Western setting. So just being mindful of when we look at the interventions of what um, they might mean. But I think they are useful in trying to understand of what happens when you really um, increase the level or turn up the heat or, or crank it up as, as um, we've referred to. Um, some people are referred to it as. Okay. Now there are a number of other reviews that are going on on specific approaches and we think it's worthwhile when you're looking at um, trying to decide what to do in a community to look at the individual um, interventions and then try to put them together. In our review, we were just not getting a sense that by a lot of activity, doing a lot of activity is going to yield, um, necessarily yield um, health outcomes. But what we did think about, what got us thinking, I put this graph up as ex this, um, this slide up just for exploratory purposes, um, is that we're wondering whether the environmental changes might be an area where there is potential for investment in. And I know that there's a review being undertaken on this topic, so I think it's, it's, it's important to um, keep this in mind um, because the Brown study had some, had some increases for women. Um, the DeCocker, they used some approaches around signage. Um, the Genom, well, it had a, a possibility of some increases. The Lubker, Lubker um, had some change. New South Wales was, had, seemed to have some trending and um, as well as the Simmons. So we just think that this is one area that people might want to look at exploring. And this is just a map. And I know some people will find these results or findings disappointing, but the poor quality of many of the studies, which were actually quite large investments, um, made us um, quite worried um, as we were looking through it. And so I think there are some um, take home messages and some thoughts um, for us to consider. And the general implication is that we, you know, doing a review like this is, um, is foundational to find out what is the relevant evidence that is available on a topic. So we really extensively looked for um, community-wide interventions. We had our eyes wide open. Um, we were not after randomized studies. We just said they just had to have a comparison group at the minimal. And, um, and our next um, suggestion around implications is, um, is to go back to the reviews of the individual components which people are thinking about um, putting together. So. Again, I know there's a review on mass media um, interventions, so have a look at what, what's being said about mass media interventions. And um, there's a review being, um, that's undertaken at the moment, a Cochrane review on incentives, so that'll be important to find out what, where they're putting incentives into a package is useful. So um, that's where we're thinking. And um, we're also thinking about um, that there may be some settings that might be quite useful and it might be a promising direction uh, for future interventions. And I think if someone's going to invest in this area, we need to make sure that there are some um, strong evaluation designs. 
um, being put in place. And I've certainly been made aware of a study that's being um, undertaken at the moment in um, Japan um, where they have randomized 12 communities. Um, nine of those have been assigned to an intervention and three of those to a control. And um, the one-year data was presented at the um, International Physical Activity Conference back in November. And it'll be very important to wait until they have their three-year data. But their um, one-year data at this point in time, they did not find any difference between the, um, between the intervention communities and the control. Okay, so I think that's where we are with the um, the review, and um, I see some questions have come through, and I'll just leave this um, take-home message up for you just to ponder through. And these are, I think, some of the things that I've already stated, um, and come back to um, during the. Um, the presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Baker, for that uh, excellent and very thorough presentation of the results of your review. And also, uh, thank you for alerting us to some upcoming reviews that we can be looking out for uh, over the next several months that may further inform uh, what we can be doing to promote physical activity, uh, as well as identifying other reviews that exist that we might uh, want to also be taking a look at. So at this point, uh, I would just like to open it up to questions for those of you that uh, are on the line with us today. Uh, get your thoughts, questions, reactions. Uh, I mean, certainly I can appreciate that a review that ends up identifying that um, a number of the strategies many of us might be using uh, actually don't work is not necessarily the news that we want to hear. And then what do we do with that information? So certainly wanting to use this opportunity now. Uh, we, we have 45 minutes left on uh, the webinar to uh, promote discussion, debate, dialogue, hear your comments, and uh, between Philip, uh, Dr. Baker, and I, we'll do our best to uh, address your questions. So I do see a question, and what I'll be doing here is just passing the mic back and forth between uh, Philip and I. I will mute uh, while we uh, change the headset just so that you're not hearing a lot of uh, static, so just bear with us as we do that. Uh, a question I, hear, I see here says, can you please state again what the topic is for the current uh, Cochrane review. And uh, sorry, I'm just having that passed to me. So it's community-wide interventions for increasing physical activity. And again, I think that, that is a really good question to ask in terms of being um, what we really want to know when we're looking at titles of reviews is uh, can we identify the population that's the focus of the review, the intervention being assessed, uh, and at the very least then what outcome uh, is being evaluated. And, and this is different from uh, I have a review that will be released in the um, the Cochrane Library at the end of February, February 28th, I believe, uh, that is looking at the effectiveness of school-based interventions to promote physical activity in children and adolescents. Uh, so very important to know um, those topics. So I'm going to just scan back and forth to see if there are other questions that are coming out. Uh, so I might uh, maybe take the opportunity to ask a question myself back to Dr. Baker um, and, and just ask him to comment on, given that the evidence right now uh, is, is not very definitive on what we should be doing, but we need to be doing something, what would he say we should be doing in terms of our efforts to promote uh, physical activity across the population?
Thank you, Dr. Dobbins. That's certainly a challenging question. Um, and um, and I've pointed out that I think it's useful to use the resources like um, healthevidence.ca as a means to identify the, the strategies which work. And we know there are some strategies which work um, for increasing physical activity, um, such as the um, using schools as, as an approach. There are um, other approaches which are being reviewed by Cochrane Reviews at the, at the present point in time. And those are the, um, one on the incentives. And that, I think, is um, potentially promising, but we need to look at the results. And there's also a review um, being undertaken on the um, uh, environmental um, and infrastructure. And that's being um, done by um, Dr. Mark Tully. So I So um, here's a question from um, Ken um, Shaw, who's asked, um, so given the conclusions to environmental change um, settings base comprise the inventory of promising practices? And I think at this point, I think it is um, promising. And, um, and also those working in specific settings. Um, there was one study which which um, was in a remote community in Norway, in a disadvantaged community, and what they did is they engaged a men through men's communities, with sporting groups specifically, and um, I believe the process evaluation was quite favorable on that. So it spoke to men and they did have measurable increases in physical activity. So we're also thinking that there may be specific settings um, which you could be able to work in. And, um, and I guess the challenge is that when we go to take a big um, approach, like saying we want to increase the whole population's level, that's a really big challenge because it means we have to reach the whole community. And um, I really don't know. Um, how do we really reach the whole community? But I guess some of these um, studies have taken the approach, well, let's find the community which, at mo which is at most in need and, um, and work and try to increase that group and try to avoid um, uh, increasing health inequalities. And I think that's quite a commendable approach um, to be looking at. So, um, a question from Danielle Schofeld was asking, um, I referred to environmental components, so what do such environmental components include? So we found a wide range of environmental components. Um, I'm thinking of the um, Rockhampton 10,000 Steps in particular. They did a lot of work around transforming Rockhampton into being a more walkable and then more of a place where you can do cycling. Um, so they engaged with the city of Rockhampton in building um, and upgrading trails and uh, making it more uh, safe and um, straightforward for people to be able to, um, to access locations. A number of studies, including the Rockhampton 10,000 steps, they used the amount of, they, they used signage in which they um, noted um, the distances. Um, and there were also other strategies around, um, just trying to think of something. Um, so walk, walking, safe walking places, um, as well as some um, policies. Um, I, I think there were some policies as well that were aimed at um, increasing walking. So 
So given the conclusions, so um, the other question that's come as a follow-up question is, so um, should we take off smaller, better defined chunks? Should we, um, I, I don't, what I think you're asking by that is, instead of saying, well, we're going to change the whole, increase the whole um, levels of physical activity for, say, um, Halifax, or should we actually specify um, specific um, neighborhoods? Um, and I think that's probably a reasonable way um, to um, try to um, um, do an intervention as well as it also means that you can um, measure the outcomes. Um, so, so do the intervention and as well as um, have some robust measurement and um, perhaps find some comparative com communities to intervene in. Um, now, we had a question here from um, Stacia Starr, and she says, we realize the quality of studies is poor, but were there any differences in outcomes between the nine physical activity only studies and the 18 studies that merge physical activity promotion with other chronic disease factors? Um, I would have to... Um, dig back into the review, but I do remember that, um, for example, that those Chinese studies, some of the ones that have marked increase of physical activity, Jane, for example, um, that was aimed at healthy behavior. So I can look into that for you and, and get back to you. Okay, we have a, a, a comment here from Alison Omara Eves. Um, she says the logic, the, the multi-level logic model is quite interesting. Is it possible to discuss a little about its development? Also, do you think that it, the interaction between the levels might impact effectiveness? For example, did you see examples of interventions? in which strong community development, the first level, led to better implementation, the second level, and therefore better outcomes. Okay, this logic model, um, it came through, an, uh, um, we developed as a team um, through quite a bit of discussion um, of what we could see um, um, being reflected in the literature and in the studies at, at hand of, um, of what people were trying to do and, and, and noticing that um, in recommendations, certainly we, we can think about the Ottawa Charter about, you know, having engagement, community engagement, and so that therefore it meant that if that is one of the requirements, then we should make sure that we have that um, some sort of a the engagement process um, articulated within the um, the review, and so we with this logic model, we wanted to ask the, we 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 set it up to trying to um, to just give us a pictorial picture of what we thought, um, how these interventions might actually be working. So it's just us. Um, a logic model is just a hypothesis, but it was also a means by which we um, tried then to articulate and um, and then form the basis of our data collection, as well as our search strategy. And the question is, um, how did that? Um, engagement sec, um, first level um, lead to um, or more likely to be effective, and I'm really not. I'm really not sure um, on that, um, just because of the um, the diversity in the uh, just the mixed results that we found. 
I know that um, Okay, we had another question here. Um, I think the built environment is an important thing to look at. What are your thoughts? How many of these studies included in the review were related to the built environment? Um, now, the built environment is, will be covered in a separate review. and. Um, and that's the one by Mark Tolley, but we found that there were 10 studies that, that um, were focusing in on, that had an, one of the strategies was to um, do something to improve the environment. And I remember the New South Wales one had a, um, one of their key elements of, the of their environmental components was to upgrade um, the parks, to, to fix the swing sets, to make them safer. Um, have the more friendly place to visit. Oh, the, we've got a question from um, which I don't know the name, and it asks the question: If we track um, changes over three, five, and ten years, maybe we can see better results. Well, that's quite interesting because many of these short studies said, um, which were ineffective, they said that, well, what we need to be doing is to do longer, longer, um, run them for longer, make them more intense. But we did look at some of the longer studies that were quite, over quite a period of years, and um, they didn't come out with dramatic results. You know, we would have thought that if they were running for five or, or ten years, they would have, um, had increased levels of physical activity, you know, running that period of time, but they didn't, um, not consistently. And another question has come in asking, we are looking to do a comprehensive PA initiative in our region and use women who are central and caregivers to many populations of people, spouse, parents, kids, coworkers. Based on, on your review, do you have any recommendations that would increase our success in increasing physical activity? Well, I think you probably know your community the best. Um, and I can't really um, give you a, um, you know, a, a, a definitive answer here, but I think what you do needs to speak to the to the people um, you're trying to reach. That's one of the things that came through, I, certainly in the um, Rockhampton 10,000 Steps, and one of the other studies we looked at, that was the, the Brown study, where it didn't actually speak to men. So if you're going to be engaging people, um, doing some process evaluation, trying to find out um, what um, people think of the intervention, even do that beforehand might be quite useful. Because if they had asked, um, you know, men ahead of time, what do you think about, it? Um, you know, going out and walking 10,000 steps, um, they may have um, had the response um, ahead of time before they did, in, did the intervention. So I think getting to know your community is very important before you do your intervention. Okay, now I'm going to pass back over to um, Dr. Dobbins. Uh, and thank you. Um, that, that, that is a, a great question to ask and I think for us to ponder a little bit more. So I can't help but take the mic back from Philip and, and provide a little bit uh, more uh, I, I guess comments on that and, and I think building on what uh, Philip said, what we can think about is in understanding what are the factors that get in the way of being active uh, for women and, and definitely across the different uh, age groups of women from children, adolescents, the childbearing years, 
uh, through to uh, uh, older older women. And and this I don't think would be any different if we were thinking about this from a population of of men or other types of uh, ways in which we might subdivide the population. So uh, ethnicity might be another way. But in better understanding what are those factors that perhaps hinder being active and, and then thinking about that when we are uh, planning our interventions, planning our strategies. So for example, um, for women who have children, who have uh, who may may not have a support system somewhere to leave the children in order to get their physical activity in for the day then what then what do we do what do our interventions do to make it easier for women to be active with potentially having their children with them uh, what are the costs associated with um, having having their children with them when they do that. Uh, what type of, uh, how, it, how easy is it to access uh, those, those places in which they might go to to be active. So I, I think it's uh, very much the same message that uh, Dr. Baker was saying throughout his presentation is in really truly understanding uh, the, the specific needs of that population and then helping to make it easier to do those things uh, could be uh, um, uh, and, and arranging the environment, helping to change the environment to make those easier choices to make. Uh, it sounds like that seems to be where we might want to be investing more of our uh, efforts at this, this point. Uh, so while I was actually just, um, you know, let, uh, giving a few of my own opinions, I see many more uh, questions have come in. So this is really wonderful to see this type of engagement happening, uh, and we'll certainly do our best to continue answering those questions. So I'm just going to read one here that's come in from uh, Allison. It says, uh, sorry, we've already read that one. Um, Uh, you mentioned schools as, as an effective setting for interventions. Can you elaborate on that with examples of successful interventions uh, you know of? So, uh, so uh, Dr. Baker's just asking me to complete that, to uh, answer that question, given I'm the one that has the new review. So again, um, the evidence is not as definitive as one would like it uh, to be. Uh, and certainly the, the, the update that I have coming out next month uh, really doesn't say anything too different than what we said back in 2009, even though we added, uh, I think, about 40 more studies to the update. So tons of research is happening worldwide on how to promote physical activity. And I guess the bad news is, and the sad news, is that we haven't actually figured it out yet on how best to do that, and this is even within schools. Um, it's, it continues to be a bit dismal as well in that it, we can't really say that interventions that are short and, and not very intensive are less effective than those that go over multiple years and are very intensive. Uh, we have a number of examples of programs that are being inter, uh, implemented over two, three, four years, and at the end of that, we're not seeing uh, significant change in, let's say, physical activity rates. However, what does seem to be a common theme for from a school-based perspective is that it's something that seems to be impacting uh, the whole school. So it's a comprehensive uh, approach that um, one integrates more activity within the physical activity program, so within, for lack of a better word, gym class. Uh, so getting kids to spend more time uh, engaging in moderate to, phys phys uh, moderate to vigorous physical activity during that time, but it's also integrating it throughout the whole school day. So how do we integrate this into the, into the broader curriculum uh, in terms of what you're learning uh, in other uh, courses? So some of those examples uh, would have uh, educational sessions going on 
throughout an entire school year that could be happening in math class or science class, uh, as well as more organized time for children uh, and, and adolescents to be engaged um, in physical activity throughout the day while they are at school. We also know from uh, Dr. Elizabeth Waters' current review that was published just over a year ago as well in the Cochrane Library that uh, obesity prevention interventions, uh, particularly in the schools that focus both healthy eating on healthy eating and promoting physical activity, there is uh, some evidence there to say that we're seeing positive effects in children age 6 to 12 not seeing that uh, so far in those types of interventions for adolescents and for those under five. So there's still more work to be done there. So um, not a not a overly comprehensive or definitive answer for you. The final conclusions of my review is that uh, this comprehensive type of approach that involves changes to the curriculum, um, beefing up the physical activity part of, uh, of the, the PA sessions or, or gym classes uh, are really important to increasing the amount of time children spend engaged in moderate to vigorous physical activity as well as uh, some some newer evidence now suggesting that we're getting more more kids involved in that level of physical activity that that we did not see in the first review, uh, and also uh, that some of the interventions can also be effective in reducing the the amount of time that children. Uh, spend engaged in uh, sedentary behavior. So, for example, watching TV, video games, uh, those types of um, those types of activities. So, I'm just going to look over to Dr. Baker, see if he has anything else he'd like to add at this point. Okay. So, I see that we have an additional question that says, uh, "I am interested in the partnership part. Is there specific recommendations?" in the review regarding partnership and how to build successful ones. So just uh, hold on a moment while I pass that back to Philip. Thanks very much, Dr. Dobbins. Um, in terms of partnerships, uh, there is a review uh, that a kind of new a Cochrane review that's been recently updated uh, by Sarah Hayes, and it has asked the question about whether partnerships engaging um, community, um, local government with health, um, whether they provide health outcomes. And I think it's important to have a look at that review um, when you go to asking the questions about partnerships. Um, they have um, looked into that issue and try to answer it. Um, and I have another question that's come in and it's and um, someone has asked, were studies looking at increasing physical activity in a workplace included? And yes, we found that three of these included studies, that is the Brown, the Lubker, and the DeCocker, um, they all um, had um, workplaces as one of the locations. And that's probably, a um, again, that comes back to a settings approach, and that's where we're wondering whether, um, you know, specific settings might be useful. And um, again, it will be useful to, I think, again, go back to the individual systematic reviews on um, workplaces, if you're interested in workplaces specifically, and, and find out what the literature is currently saying on that around where it potentially works. Thank you very much for your questions. I've certainly um, been challenged with a, a, a good response in questions this afternoon and in participation. I'm glad to see um, um, people interested in this topic and, and looking at the review. And again, we have um, a um, materials that have been prepared for journal clubs. So if you'd like to have some discussion with your colleagues locally, I'd encourage you to um, find on the Cochrane Collaboration the podcast um, 
as well as the um, Journal Club. Now we are hoping within the next couple months to begin the update on this review uh, and um, also at least include the um, first um, one year data of um, the CAMNA study that's um, in Japan and also look to find out what other studies have um, been undertaken. I'm certainly encouraged that people are thinking seriously about um, how these types of interventions are um, evaluated uh, when investments are being made and trying to contribute to the evidence base in a way that um, people like um, myself and Dr. Dobbins who are systematic reviewers can help put these together and, um, and provide some clearer answers than what we um, have um, been able to provide to with today. And now I'll just pass back to um, Dr. Dobbins and thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Philip, uh, and thank you for joining us uh, today. It certainly was a pleasure to actually have you right here with us while we uh, conducted this uh, review on physical activity and certainly still much more to learn, uh, much more to do, uh, and uh, we look forward to the results of ongoing, as the ongoing evidence emerges in this field. Uh, so I'm just going to take a moment to see if there are any last questions. Certainly, I'm, I've been really excited to uh, see all of the interaction that's happened. Sometimes it's really hard on uh, webinars to get the uh, uh, interaction, but uh, really wonderful to have all of you with us today. So I don't see any new questions being added, so I don't want to keep us on, on the line any longer than we need to. We're all, I know all of you are very busy. So just letting you know that uh, a copy of the presentation as well today was uh, also audio taped. And uh, this, all of the information, the PowerPoint, the summary statement, uh, and the audio file will be uh, uploaded to our posting board, the Forum on Health Evidence. For those of you that haven't been there before, you do need to log in to Health Evidence with uh, your username or, and password. Uh, and and if, you are, if you aren't a member but would like to access that, we would encourage you to do so. And then finally, just before we let you go, I would just like to uh, inform you of a couple of initiatives that are, that are happening with the Canadian Institutes of Health Research through the Institute of Population and Public Health funding opportunities. Uh, certainly there are opportunities uh, across the country for public health partner, public health folks to partner with researchers in order to submit grants to be funded that could be funded by CIHR through this Institute of Population and Public Health. And the ones that uh, this institute feel would be most relevant to public health uh, relate to the population health intervention research to promote health and health equity. There's knowledge translation awards. There's the Institute Community Support Grants and Awards, and as well, CIHR's Open Operating Grants uh, Program. So all of those are accessible to uh, those of you working in public health. And then just uh, one example that we have of a grant that was funded through the Population Health Intervention Research uh, Competition was the evaluation of traffic safety interventions in BC. Uh, and the purpose of this study was to look at whether the number of vehicle crashes changed after changes to the province's Motor Vehicle Act, uh, with the understanding that these in, the findings of this study will influence British Columbia's road safety strategy and will be of interest to traffic safety lawmakers in other parts of Canada. Uh, so just showing you there an example uh, of the, the many different ways in which health uh, can, um, can be defined uh, around submitting grants to CIHR. So the best place to find information about this is to visit ResearchNet, uh, which identifies current funding opportunities and the URL is provided. And also, and I use this often myself, if ever in doubt or questioning, because there is a lot of information on the CIHR website, uh, uh, an email to the program manager of uh, specific funding calls is always a really good idea as they can give you some more detailed information. 
So that is it for today. I'd like to thank you one more time for joining us today. It certainly was a pleasure uh, to have you with us. This actually is the final webinar that was funded by the KT Supplement Grant by CIHR. So we've actually uh, completed, I believe it was uh, 12 webinars on eight topics in the past uh, 10 months. Uh, and we have been evaluating uh, these workshops and uh, based on, on uh, those findings, we will be looking at how we can tweak the work, how we can tweak the webinars and improve them. Uh, certainly uh, over the coming months, expect to see from Health Evidence uh, a call out for informing the next series of webinars that we would like to start implementing again on a monthly basis after we uh, uh, hear from public health across the country what are areas of key interest to you. So thank you again and enjoy the rest of your afternoon and we hope to uh, have you join us again in the near future for new webinars. Take care. Bye-bye.